Hey everybody. Um, my name is Keith. Some people call me Chef Keith or Chef Coop. Um, I've been a caterer for about, say, about over 20 some years, about 22 years. And um, tell me, tell you a little bit about myself. First, this is about um, how how to start a catering business and the top thing, ten things you need to know before you start. Um, but back to myself. So uh, I've been in uh, the catering field for about say 20, 22 years. Um, how I started out, I was in home ec uh, in high school, and uh, I always had a passion for cooking. So uh, I went into it and you know fell in love with the cooking and and uh, really liked it. Then I moved on to El Camino College and uh, took up uh, culinary arts and trade tech for culinary arts. Um, but um, I live in, I, well currently I live in Texas, but I'm originally from Los Angeles. Um, I did many um, studio gigs, um, you know, I was in um, craft services and different uh, type of lunches and stuff like that. Uh, also too, started on the streets of Crenshaw, selling from uh, business to business, catering that way, started out that way. and. Um, you know, so pretty much that's uh, all about me. But uh, like I said, this is about 10 things you need to know if you would like to start a catering business. So let's start with number one. Um, number one is, is catering something you really want to do or is it a hobby? Now that's really important. The reason why is because, you know, some people can tell you can cook, but that's because they tasted your food. But uh, if it's just something that you want to do on the side, you know, that's a hobby. If you want to do this full time, then you really need to take this seriously. And, um, you know, one thing is, is, is once you put, you know, your efforts into this type of uh, business, um, if you're all in, like, a, you know, pretty much, you know, it's a business. But if you just want to do it, you know, as part time, it's just something that's a hobby, then you might want to think about that. Um, number two, it's really important. Do you know how to cook? That is uh, one of the biggest things. People may tell you, you know how to cook, oh, your food is good, but you know, you know, you need to you know let people try out your food and tell give you good critics on what you can do. You know, because this may you might find out this may not be for you. You might find out that you can't cook as well as, as people say. Some people just you know, if your mom and dad is telling you, you know, say so that may be just things being nice. But uh, you want to make sure that you can cook because uh, there's a lot of safety involved in cooking. You know, you got salmonella, you got to make sure, you know, use the proper equipment, you know, um, things are clean properly. You just can't say, oh, I know how to cook because it comes with a lot of consequences. Because if you cook something and you feed somebody something that may get them sick or even to death, then, you know what I'm saying, it's a liability. And think that's something that you don't want to do. So, you know, saying no if you really want to do this and be serious about it because uh, feeding some something to somebody, they're consuming it. There's a lot of bacteria in foods. There's certain things you can't mix. You know, uh, with food, you got to do proper sanitation, washing your hands when you cook it. You just can't be what you do at home, just cooking on the stove and. You know what I'm saying? You're good because your immune system may be used to you cooking nasty, you know. But no, but seriously, when you're cooking for other people, you got to really be safe and careful of that. Okay, uh, moving on to um, number three. What type of food would you like to cook or cater? That's big. My favorite thing is I like to uh, barbecue, you know, but I cook many other dishes. And stuff like that, but cook what you like, cook what you know how to do, be well versed in what you know how. Because cooking, you know, you can cook other things, you know, you can cook Italian, Mexican, you know, uh, Indian food, African, Jamaican, it, 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 you know, it doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, this moves on to the next part is what favorite dishes. Are you interested in cooking for people? That's that's a big deal. You know, what are you interested in cooking in? What do you like to cook? 
because whatever you like to cook, that's your mainstream. That's what you're going to be cooking the most of. So remember that. You know, um, I mean, you can cook everything else. You know, I cook all types of food. I'm not stuck in one category, but it's good to have a category. You know, you you might just want to do, you know, say Italian. If you're Italian, Mexican, if you're Mexican, because, you know, family recipes, you know, very well that you might know off the head, you know, off the top of your head. Also, two um, uh, favorite dishes is is something that you do on a regular basis that you know the ins and out, outs of. So, <clears throat> you won't even have any problem with cooking that. You know, especially because it's something that you love to do. Now, once again, like I said, this has to be something that you love to do and you have passion behind it. You know, it can't be just something like, oh man, I'm just trying to find something to do because I need some money. Because you're going to get bored and you don't want to spend a lot of money into this and you don't stick with it. So, one key thing is make sure, you know, like I said, you love what you do. And like I said, this is number four, you know, favorite dishes. Know your favorite dishes you like to cook. You know, try them out on people. You know, uh, you know, see what they say. You know, if you hear a lot of good reviews, hey, go for it. All right, number five. What type of catering are you interested in? What kind of catering are you interested in? Uh, for example, weddings. You might just want to do weddings. You might want to do corporate lunches. Um, also too, there's many avenues. You might just want to be a baker, just baking cakes for weddings or, or just baking. But um, like I said, there's other avenues as far as like, you know, doing, um, what was it, uh, craft services, working for the studios. You know, um, doing baby showers, special events like anniversaries and stuff like that. You know, know what you want to do. If you want to do all of them, good, great. You know what I'm saying? You know, or you just want to pick one, that's fine as well. But uh, um, know what you want to do as far as know what type of events you want to do. Because you can also too cook for like, you know, something like Grubhub. You know, where you cater in the corporate stuff for them. And, you know, and you specifically tailor around lunch type things. So that'd be something you might want to look into. You know, there's some companies out there that only do lunches or only do dinners or only do breakfast. You know, that might be something that you might want to think about. So, you know, that's uh, number five. Okay, moving on to six. Are you cooking from home or from a commercial kitchen? Very, very important. The reason why is because some states do not allow you to cook at home. You know, so you might have to rent out a kitchen and it might be costly. It might be as far as cheap as $25 as well as all the way up to $100, you know, an hour, you know, uh, to, to cook in somebody's kitchen. If you know somebody that has a kitchen, you know, to let you do it for free, good. That You know, that is, that's a plus. You know, you know, no, no, you know. Sometimes they let you do it after after hours when the, the business is closed or something like that. But um, don't be scared. You know, I want you to this to scare you away because you can't cook out of your home. You know, but you might want to cook for just your friends and stuff like that. But when you get into like big cooking for large amounts, of people people want to verify where you're cooking at. You know, but uh, you can start off. Excuse me. You can start off. You know, cater for you know uh, your friends, family. You know, might you want to do a Super Bowl here and there. Might want to do a baby shower. Try it out. You know, uh, uh, even if you cater something at your home and inviting people, you know, to your home and taste out what you do. You know, uh, you know. But like I said, when you're dealing with you know commercial kitchens. You know, eventually the time when you get the money, believe me, this is a well a lucrative business to make a lot, a lot of money. So, you know, and you know, it's not a lot of time. You might do one or two jobs out of the, you know, week and make probably between as low as five to as high as $10,000. So you can make $500, you know, on the low end and make, you know, five to 10000 It just depends on what you do. So, you know, uh, um, so it is, you know, good, but like I said, this will help you, you know, 
in the meantime, you know, know where you want to start. You know, you can't start at home. Like, I have a commercial kitchen, so, you know, uh, uh, mine is set up just for that. You know, when I first started, I started out at home, you know, when I was delivering, you know, back home. And we delivered from, you know, place to place, you know, from home, you know. Uh, um, so that's something you can uh, um, definitely look into. You know, you know, um, if you start at home, you know, nothing wrong with that, like I said. But it would be good to do it, you know, from um, your commercial kitchen. You know, you know, it costs some money. Those that don't have to worry about that, ran out of commercial kitchen. Because you might do a large, uh, the, 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 the good thing about having a, a commercial kitchen is you have large space to do large jobs. That's the key. You know, your house might be small and, you know, you might find, you might not be equipped with everything for that. So, you know, that's uh, number six. Now, number seven is very, very important. Do you have people to help you and help deliver and help set up and break down when you do set up for a catering job? Now, this is not a one-man job. You definitely want to have a minimum, you know what I'm saying? I mean a minimum of two people. You know, I don't recommend two people. I, I, I like that. I, you know, I have three when I first started out on my team. So that's something that you might want to look into but if it's you and another partner you know good but you gotta remember you're gonna be cooking you know what i'm saying for hours on end so you're gonna need help to pack your car to unload your car to set up you know your uh, um, uh um you know your setup so you're gonna need help you're gonna need somebody to do the setup somebody to put the food in there you know, you got you got to do setup of you know you got delivery. It's a lot of things that you're gonna need help with, and it's not a one man team. You're gonna definitely need a team. You know, so I, I recommend the lowest is two. That's bending it, but three is good. You know, you need help because uh, uh, in time, you know, I, you know the largest amount that would be good is to have four. You know, even if you're still like budgeting and still starting out, four is great because it's two two main people and you got two helpers. You know, they make a serve the food while you got, you know, uh, um, uh, one of your team members talking to the client while you're dealing with the food. So, you know, so, because a lot of times you got to remember your client's going to call on you a lot. So you want to have somebody that can call on in that, that in between person while you're dealing with the food because everything is timely. The more people, the faster you're set up, the faster people are fed. That is the key. The more people you have, you know, you got to pay them. But if you find people that's on your team, that's willing to work with you, you know, you got your friends, your buddies, your parents, that's willing to help you out, you know, for free, you know, your beginning, good. Because that'll help you out in the long run. And they understand that, you know, you're just working from the ground up. So you need different people to help. But remember, the reason why it's good to pay people is because when you don't get paid, when you don't pay people, you're going to have random help. So you remember that, you know what I'm saying? And, when you, you know, you want a consistency of people on your team because you want to keep having to train somebody over and over how you would like your setup, how you like your food, how you would like to be on time and set up. So you don't want to have to keep training people. You want people, when you call them, they're consistent, they're there on time. You know, that's the whole, the whole, you know, thing with dealing with help. Okay. Number eight. How much would you charge your customers or your clients? Very key to your business. Because, you know, you know, sad to say, you know, folks like to lowball you or they want to hook up or, you know, whole, you know, family hook up and stuff like that. You're not in the business of giving hookups. This is your job. This is your business. This is not something on the side. This is something that's, you know, for your livelihood. So you want to get a proper number. Now, you know, uh, in my uh, courses that I want to have coming up soon, I mean, I will teach a detail of how to price your food. So, you know, around $10 is good. You know, uh, 15 you know, food, the inflation is going up. So, 
that's what you have to look for. So no insider on the class that that's going to, uh, you need to know pricing on your food. You know, uh, you can start out at $10 an hour. Like say for instance, if there's 880, I mean 100 people and you charge it $80, right? I'm $8 a person or a plate or whatever it is, a lunch. That, uh, that may be good depending on the product. But say for instance, you spend, you go to the grocery store and spend $400. You know, you got 100 people. Now mind you, you got people that's working for you. So you're gonna have to pay them as well. So your margin of how much you, you know, uh, take in gonna be very small. You know, my motto is 80-20. You know, I, I, I profit 80, 20 I spend. Or, you know, 20 is, you know, I, is my out. So, I mean, uh, pretty much is what I, um, you know, 20, 80 per year, <laughs> tongue twist. But yeah, um, that's what I also too gonna uh, speak on as far as, like I said, in class of how to figure that 80, 20, you know, by pricing your food, how you buy things and et cetera. But um, yeah, make sure you do not lowball yourself. That is the key. You're not in here to, to hook up anybody. You're in here for business. You know, legit business. And if those who don't understand, there's many people out there that want to eat. So they'll pay for what you ask for. So, you know, you got to just shop around and you got to stick to, you know, a, a, a set number. Because people like the will and deal, you know, and you ain't in the will and deal business. This is your job. So, be careful how you price too. Don't want to price too low. You want to price too high because if you price too high, you got to find out who's your competition. You know, there's a lot of competition out there that, you know, um, that might lowball you and take your business. So you want to be careful. So shop around, see what the stores and the latest restaurants. You know, that's also too going to be in a class too. You know, on uh, uh, you know finding out what your what, how much your local business is and restaurants and who caters, you know, in your uh, area. Because uh, they do have, you know, uh, forms a way to find out who cater, who else catering in your area. You know, uh, so you want to know what your competition is when you come down to that. Okay, now moving on to number eight. This is very important too. How far do you want to travel with catering? Do you want to stay local? Just stay in your little town, or do you want to travel out? You know, or you don't have no limits. You know, sometimes people go out of town, you know, but uh, um, be, be flow out of town to cook. It just depends on, you know, what you like to do, how far you want to go, how much you want to take on. That's a lot. You know, I, um, I currently stay local, but I do some, you know, outer catering. You know, um, I. Uh, deliver for Grubhub, so sometimes I might have to go to downtown Houston and um, deliver for a lot of the corporate builders down there. But uh, I'm okay with that. You know, I, I know my routes. I know how to get there and get back. But um, like if you're doing like a wedding, you know, you don't want to be way across town, you know, to to the north side. And it might take you two hours to get there. You know, you know, because you got to remember, you got you know a vehicle. You, gotta, you know, you got to travel, you know, uh, there, you know, so you make sure you got a reliable transportation, you know what I'm saying, you know, because so that's a key of how far you want to travel. Okay, number 10, last but not least, I just spoke of this, do you have reliable transportation? Very key, because you don't want your car breaking down in the middle of a job. You know how bad that looks on you that you don't make it to a job? You know what I'm saying? They'll never hire you. And then they're gonna, it's going to be a rumors going around and remind you. Nowadays, people are getting ruined by just reviews. You know what I'm saying? You get a one bad review, that can affect your entire business. So make sure you got some good transportation, something that fits all your food in there and holds everything right. You know, uh, um, in the courses of class, the, the course I'm gonna be having, uh, it's gonna we're gonna speak about transportation and packing and stuff like that, and how to pack your car. So I, you know, when I like I said, when 
I have that up. I'll let everybody know. But that is uh, number 10, transportation. You know, make sure you have something that fits all your employees. If you can't ask for help, ask for other, uh, you know, people on your team to drive their car and help you out. You know what I'm saying? So you can have more than one way to get there. You know, that's a, you know, it also too helps you out putting equipment in their car too. So you won't be packing your car up. You know, um, so, you know, uh, I do have a part two to this. So stay tuned to the part two uh, because there's other things that you're going to need, you know, like permits and other stuff like that. And I'm going to speak on that too as well. Uh, um, so there we are, the things you need to know when we want to start a catering business. Thank you, and I'll see you. And don't forget to subscribe below. Click the bell as well because I'm going to have more coming in the future. All right, see you later.